So as Pete said, I'm Leighton Duncan, and I founded a uh, company called Polar Bear Farm, which was, uh, I, I claim, the, the world's first iPhone app development company. And so anyone that follows me on Twitter probably knows that I, uh, I'm never short of an opinion or shy away from a good rant. Um, but I kind of struggled in, in thinking about what to, to talk about here. And I was thinking about maybe talking about some of my principles uh, behind mobile and why mobile is interesting in the first place and uh, maybe how to approach solutions. Uh, but then I thought, well, that might be interesting to some. Uh, it could equally be uh, a little old news to others. Um, and there's nothing worse than being lectured to on something that you already understand. Um, and so I was thinking about what the most valuable thing was that I could share with you and uh, so instead I'm going to talk about something a little more abstract. Um, some stories along uh, the theme of finding out uh, what motivates you to do what you do. So I am taking a bit of a different tact here and uh, I've kind of been in this whole philosophical zone for the last little while after events uh, back home. And so I'm going to tell you about three events in the life of Polar Bear Farm so far. First, how we started, uh, then how the company was almost destroyed, and then, um, then how it was almost destroyed again. Uh, so uh, really, to give you an idea of the influence that, that those events have kind of had on what I choose to do. So I have this obsession with finding out how things work. And uh, this is me, I think, four or five. And the thing on the left there is a, a big pool filter, a big sand pool filter. And I think I always wondered where the pipes went to out the bottom of it, where they came from, where they went to, and of course decided to find out. But it's not just machines and systems that I'm interested in, it's people as well. And so I'm intrigued hearing other people's stories about and, and gleaning, gleaning some sort of value out of them, and so hopefully you can find something of value in what I'm about to talk about. So back in 2007, uh, being a long time Mac geek, I was watching Steve introduce the first iPhone, and it was a holy crap moment. No one could believe what they were seeing on the screen was even possible. And I instantly knew that I wanted to write software for this thing. And so when it was released uh, six months or so later, I imported one from the US, unlocked it, and started poking around. And I had some experience with ARM hardware. Um, my background is in electrical engineering, so as part of that, I designed an embedded computer and, and um, right from laying out the circuit board, uh, soldering it, and porting Linux to it. So I had some experience with with uh, putting together the tool chains and, and compilers needed to actually generate code for this thing. And so I'd started writing software for it, uh, spending a lot of time class dumping the various frameworks and UI kit, uh, figuring out how all the various bits and pieces work together. But in just using the iPhone day to day, I'd come across something that was really bugging me. And it was that you couldn't find anything quickly on the thing. There was no search built in whatsoever. And at the same time, I would set up a, a small side company uh, unlocking all these iPhones that were coming into New Zealand. And, uh, and a lot of these people were having the same problem. They were switching from Palm Trios, and so they were used to being able to search for absolutely anything on their device. And the iPhone was almost unusable for them. It had no search. Uh, so, over the, so over a couple of days, I wrote my first iPhone app uh, called Search. And it let people basically search their contacts, calendar events, email, SMS, uh, things like that. And so I decided to release it as a paid app, the very first paid app for the iPhone. Uh, so naturally, the first thing to do was to sit down and carefully craft a business plan, because that's what you do when you start a business, right? So the idea was to create apps for a device which had no official third-party tools for development, no official way to install apps, and no official way to even find apps. And then our market was going to be people who were willing to pay 600 bucks for a phone, who were then willing to hack that phone, 
and could endure PayPal's horrific website on the iPhone to actually pay for these apps. And so about now you're probably all thinking, uh, genius. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? And of course there was no business plan. It was just the challenge of figuring out how this thing works and the thought that I could add something to it and prove it. Just imagining all the things you could do with the touch screen and the internet wherever you were. And so I posted a link, uh, a download link for search on a forum called hackintosh.org. And within a couple of hours, the first license purchase notifications came through. A few hundred dollars or so in the first uh, 24 hours. And a week or so later, I called up a, a longtime friend who uh, was always interested in business and marketing and promotion. And I said, I've got this thing which I think is taking off. You want to come and help me build it? Wouldn't it be cool if we went and ex exhibited this stuff in Macworld in San Francisco? And he was like, you want to travel halfway around the world to Apple's home turf, set up a booth, showing off apps that people can't install on their phone without hacking them? <laughs> exactly, I said. And he was in. <laughs> so over the next uh, few months, it grew quickly from a few hundred dollars a day to a few thousand dollars a day. And we weren't even really trying to sell stuff at this point. There was no plan. We had just dived into the unknown, exploring the interesting and uh, interesting developments around every corner. It was unbelievably exciting times. Then around a year later, a few months after the App Store had launched, things hit the fan. My friend decided he wanted to do other things, and We'd had pretty heated discussions about the, the sorts of apps that we, we were creating, the quality, etc. And I thought those conversations need to be frank and honest. But in the end, he wasn't happy doing what he was doing anymore. And it was hugely disappointing. But if you're not enjoying what you're doing, then obviously you need to change that uh, for, everyone's, uh, for everyone's benefit. But then things turned pretty dirty, and ultimately it resulted in me buying him out of the company, handing over a check, and uh, never speaking to him again. I couldn't trust him anymore. A 20-year friendship destroyed. And it hurt. And it reset the company back to square one. It was just me, employees were gone, and a lot of the money was gone. And in the months leading up to that, I'd kind of shied away from working on the really ambitious projects that I wanted to. I built up a long list of things that I wanted to do one day, and it took the near destruction of my company to make all those one days into today's. And so I traveled. I went to Red Bull Air races around the world that I always wanted to do. I flew halfway around the world to Florida to see the launch of one of the last shuttle missions. But more importantly, I finally started working on the software that I've been wanting to work on for a long time, but never had the courage to. Somewhere along the line, I'd lost, I'd stopped working on the things that were really meaningful to me. So I was lucky that this happened. And the last story. I'm not going to go into great detail about a lot of it because it's, it's fairly heavy. Um, in September 2010, uh, a magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck uh, 20 kilometres or so outside my city, Christchurch. And because it hit very early in the morning, there was only really material damage. We were all incredibly lucky. Six months later, after the aftershocks had largely subsided. We hadn't felt any for a week or two. I'd just sat down at my desk after having lunch at the uh, Italian restaurant downstairs from our office when a massive aftershock struck. It was immediate. There was no delay between hearing it and the shaking. This one was directly under the city. The noise was immense. The rattling and breaking glass, the noise of solid wooden beams splintering above, 
and the sound of bricks pummeling the lane below. The shaking was incredibly violent. The ground thrust upwards half a metre in the first half second, lurched a metre sideways in the next second, and fell down before slamming upwards again, repeating for the next 30 seconds or so. And it seems like such a short time when you hear it. 30 seconds. 30 seconds which changes absolutely everything in your life. No warning, no chance to plan, no escaping it. And the city was destroyed. And future plans were destroyed. And my perspective changed on a lot of things, but I'm going to tell you about one thing in particular which kept running through my mind in the weeks and months afterwards. And it was one question. What ran through your mind in that 30 seconds? And when I asked people that, most initially joked it off. But they knew what I was getting at. An experience like that has an extreme way of identifying what it is that you most want. And all the clutter you accumulate in your mind is pushed aside. And what was most universal was that people's thoughts were about themselves. And a lot started with, I wish I had have. I wish I had have tried this. I wish I had have gone there. I wish, I've, I, I wish I had have continued such and such. And these people weren't at all unhappy in what they were doing before the earthquakes. They loved their jobs. But I think in asking that question, they found out that they weren't necessarily working on what was most meaningful for them. When that day comes that you find out what is, what really matters to you, you don't want to be left thinking, I wish I had it, because it will hurt. The good news is that we were lucky. We get the chance to change that if we wanted to. So what's the relevance of all this? Well, first, at a lower level, there's value in diving into the unknown, getting lost, just exploring without knowing where you're going. All those experiences and unexpected things that you learn shape how you, you approach solving problems, both consciously and intuitively. I have this um, theory on intuition, and we know that the, the brain has kind of evolved to be amazingly powerful at pattern matching. In the distant past, we needed to uh, avoid predators, and the brain's uh, subconscious pattern matching was the, the solution to that. It answered the question, is that shape in the distance going to kill us without us having to uh, consciously think about that? And so my theory is that intuition is the brain's subconscious reasoning, pulling all the experience, all the information, applying its pattern matching to give you an answer for things that you can't necessarily consciously reason. And the more you use your intuition, the better it gets. It can be amazingly powerful. Striding into unfamiliar territory and finding your way out trains your intuition. And software development is a hugely creative field, especially mobile. You have the extra constraints of screen area, battery, performance, time. And you have this vast array of contextual inputs. These devices can see and hear. They know where you are. They know which direction you're pointing. They know how they're moving. Piecing it all together demands extreme creativity. And creativity de demands diverse knowledge and experiences. But at a higher level, how do you know when you've found what you should be working on? Well, for me, it's when one day you feel extreme excitement, and then the next you're absolutely terrified at the prospect of actually doing it. And that is the work that I suggest you choose to do. And it's a very personal choice. 
and it's never an easy choice. But whatever you do, it doesn't need to change the world, but it probably should change you. So that's what I wanted to share with you today, and um, hopefully it's of value in whatever you do.